colleague, Senate Bill 1463 addresses two critical concerns. First is greenhouse gases. Wildfires generate more than more greenhouse gas in two and a half days than all the cars in California operating for a full year in California. Therefore, we should include this in the scoping plan for the Air Resources Board. Two, speaking of cars, the legislature seems to want 100% electric cars in the future. This requires an immense amount of grid infrastructure, so therefore we should use cap and trade revenues to build it. As numerous wildfires have been caused by electric lines, like the Butte fire, we should harden the grid to prevent fires, greenhouse gases, and lost structures, and just recently lost lives, including 44 this fall. In 2017, we saw 9,000 major wildfires and it consumed 1.2 million acres. SB 1463 will address this. It completes AB 32. Sacramento is mandating massive electric expectations. Therefore, it cannot put this load, pardon the pun, on the ratepayers or the utility shareholders. Fortunately, Sacramento has the financial resources to beef up our utilities with cap and trade. On January 16th of this year, I met with the three major electric utilities to discuss the recent occurrences with the wildfires. I met with San Diego Gas and Electric slash Sempra Energy, Southern California Edison, and PG&E. As a result of the discussion, uh, we discussed response, recovery, and rebuild. So the five takeaways I received from that meeting were, were one strategy to uh, or a strategy of investing in more resilient infrastructure to address climate change to goal of system hardening example pole conversions undergrounding electric lines SCADA enabled reclosers uh, three there needs to be stronger defined protocols and regulations around prevention for collaboration, California needs to reassess how it plans to comprehensively address wildfire risk in a changing climate. And five, hardening will help ratepayers with lower wildfire insurance premiums. Doing nothing hinders the availability of this risk mitigating tool for the utilities. SB 1463 will help save California's forests, which may assist in overall water consumption thus addressing another critical need facing our state, thanks to better forest management through thinning or prescribed burns. Utilizing 25% of cap and trade revenues will show the world that California is truly focused on global warming. Currently, it has a massive blind spot by ignoring wildfires. Instead of blaming climate change, California has the ability to comprehensively address this elephant in the room by addressing one, greenhouse gas, two, long-term infrastructure improvements, three, reducing the anticipated burden on ratepayers, which is equivalent of their incurring a hidden tax, four, it creates jobs, and five, it, it prepares for addressing electric cars and trucks. Colleagues, just a recent study found that if you were to adopt Tesla trucks, it would take as much energy that it, it takes to power 4,000 homes just to recharge one truck for 300 miles. So that's a massive amount of electricity that we have to transport around this state. So from generation to distribution to consumption, we need to address electric lines and their relationship to wildfires and its relationship to greenhouse gases. Prevention mandates that power lines of all modes be hardened now so SB 1463 provides the funding, the accountability, the environmental protections that are, are lacking. It provides a solution for tree mortality, providing carbon sinks. It provides a safeguard for those in high danger fire map zones known as hazard severity zones by CAL FIRE. It addresses greenhouse gas reductions comprehensively. It, is, it provides a closing of the loop that the governor should gladly embrace and it provides the byproduct of new jobs. Colleagues, we can no longer let wildfires started by electric power lines destroy what should be a majestic and pristine state. Sacramento has the ability to connect the existing dots, a revenue source, a statewide grid improvement, and a vision for the future. If global warming is real, then SB 1463 will prove the legislature's 
sincerity about holistically addressing it, and I urge and I vote on Senate Bill 1463. Are those other supporters, witnesses in support of SB 1463? Please come forward, supporters. Yes, Stacey Heaton, Rural County Representatives of California in support. Opposition to uh, SB 1463. All right, well and then we'll close the public hearing. Um, so you've read this, the staff report. We talk on, you wanna include forest fires under cap and trade. And we understand that that, that that becomes a covered entity. There's a lot of covered entities now that have to surrender one compliance instrument for every emission that they that they reduce. If we bring in, typically we were looking at man-made emissions, not there were forest fires before we were here. You and I and you and all of us were here. So we don't we don't include them. If you include those emissions, you necessarily jack up the price of what the, the cover, other covered entities have to pay. Is that really what you want to do? Yes, it is. Okay. Mr. Chair, um, we have forest fires that occur naturally for centuries, decades, mm -hmm. you know, millennial. But now we've got man-made fires that are devastating the ecology of, of, of this state. Where we, we, These plants can handle maybe a fire every... 60 years, but not every six years. So I, I don't dispute that. I don't okay. dispute that I'm there sorry. needs to be more done on, on uh, rather than suppression of fires is prevention of fire. That's a different question. That's the money side. But if you include it in the calculation, you're going to have a lot of covered businesses that they're going to see that their allowances jack up or fall down depending on how many fires we have. And sort of the the idea of a market-based mechanism in cap and trade was to smooth out that. And, you know, we're, there's other, uh, well, I guess I just want to make sure that you understood that, that that would have that effect that. Right, but it's a free market auction for, and so we're talking about dealing with an issue that actually benefits a lot of our firms that are, are buying the credits uh, because we're trying to at least make sure that their properties are safeguarded. So it's a cost of doing business. This is, this is what we get to enjoy in California. So I'm saying, if you're going to bid, and you're, you're involved, and you're trying to mitigate, let's let's take it. Let's take care of the whole, the whole, the whole pie, not just two thirds of it, and ignore wildfires, which are wiping out all the data and stats that you're trying to achieve. So we've got to be, you know, it's going to come at a cost, but it's got to be realistic. Otherwise, who are we kidding? Okay. The next portion of the bill, I have problems with is the funding to the counties to let out a tranche of money to the counties with the anticipation that there may be forest fires and then the accountability that we have with that like oh there isn't a fire who's going to give back that dough just yeah put it in no the vernacular. It's, it's a great question and I, I guess the answer would be mr. chair that you know we could spend probably a long time with an infinite number of formulas on how to distribute the money so to get the ball rolling, we said, let's go 58 different counties. Whatever they don't need comes back to the, to the state, which is then redistributed to where it's really needed. Uh, sort of a similar strategy with Prop 63. If you don't spend your Mental Health Services Act funds within three years, it goes back to the state and is redistributed elsewhere. So that was the, the model we had. But we could certainly make uh, you know, a myriad of amendments and changes to make sure that the, the hard hardening of these assets are done quickly. If a one county is small, like Alpine does it with a, with a few dollars, then boom, they, they, they just send the money back and, and get it to the other counties where we can start addressing this issue there. Yeah, that was part of the, what was brought up is that you have LA County with 11 million people in Alpine and, and all 58 counties getting an equal amount of funding just seemed, um, didn't, it didn't uh, calculate the need and that. Uh, yeah, there's no the, match. But, but I'm open to any kind of uh, friendly amendments that would okay. address that. I, we just wanted to start somewhere, and so okay. this is the, 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 the approach we took. Right. Senator Stone. Now, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate uh, your comments. And to uh, refer to your comments earlier, we're focused on just the environmental aspects of the bill. And certainly uh, the cost of the credits is something that will be addressed probably in appropriations, I imagine, if it goes there. But, uh, you know, Senator, I, I think it's a very thoughtful approach to 
managing the, the, the horrific uh, air quality issues associated with the numerous wildfires that we've had that are allegedly caused by, by climate change. And we have this cap and trade program and using revenue from cap and trade to, uh, to try to mitigate uh, that air quality issue from these wildfires by doing, you know, bur uh, plan burns to try to eliminate uh, the, the overall air quality debacle that happens when we have these horrific, gigantic uh, fires. So uh, I, I can see that you put a lot of thought into this, and I think it, uh, it has a lot of merit. And uh, with, the, with the appropriate time, I'd like to move your bill. Thank you. It's appropriate now. That's a, that's <laughs> a motion. Um, uh, seeing no other questions, you may close. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for letting us take a hard look at what's actually been happening in this state. And as someone who's enjoying the process here and seeing where the direction is on how we're addressing climate change, it seems to me that we should be addressing it holistically. We can't just force all the ratepayers and utilities to start figuring out how to harden these assets. And we've got a revenue source. So I think this is a genuine bill. This is a fun bill that sort of harmonizes all the components to try and get things fixed and make California a real model for the rest of the country and the world. Uh, but if, if we have a blind spot and we don't address it, then all our metrics kind of go out the window without addressing the hardening of these uh, electric lines. And this is, a, I think, a win-win for, for everyone. Yes, some may pay more, but at, on the whole, this, this addresses some major concerns going forward into the future if we're trying to be so electricity dependent uh, this this would be a fun way to get the ball rolling. Okay, I'm unable to support the bill today. Oh, come on. I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've made some comments directly to the F Department of Finance, to Cal Fire, to the, uh, the uh, Air Board about the, the weight and the amount of funding that's going into Forest Health, and given the information we had, sort of the, the, the spirit of, of your legislation. So with that, we'll call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item number 24, SB 1463 by Senator Morlock. That motion is due pass to the Senate Governance and Finance Committee. Wykowski? Aye. No. Oh. No. No, no. <laughs> Wykowski, no. Psych. <laughs> Stone? Hey, is that close? <laughs> aye. Stone, aye. Gaines? Hill. Lara? Skinner? Stern. Oh, okay, we'll keep that matter on hold. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You have Chair. a vote. Um, and we'll and, and, and should, should, since I won't be here when the rest of the votes cast, should I not get the necessary votes, I'd like to at least have it reconsidered. Yeah.